so welcome back. So what we're going to talk about today is a few of the more uh, detailed things in PicoSoft. You've kind of learned about inputs last time and, and the queue outputs, and we're going to learn about some more details. Specifically, the topics we've got are markers, timers, and counters. There's a little chart here uh, that we'll see again once we open PicoSoft um, of all the different types of elements that you might put into a circuit diagram. We kind of know all there is to know about inputs, so you know that one's done. And then there's this other one called push buttons. That was the little buttons that were just on top. You actually know everything there is to know about those as well, because those are just a different type of input. So we're going to start learning about these other guys. And we're going to start off uh, with markers. Um, and markers are actually very similar to output, so I just went ahead and, and associated markers and outputs together, because uh, that's what we're going to learn about next. Turns out we've only kind of scratched the surface of uh, what markers and outputs can do. Uh, first off, what is a marker? So a marker is exactly like an output, except for the fact that it's internal only. So an output you could think of as like a variable, but that variable is also like visible to the outside world. So, so for example, like the pick analogy is port B was a variable, except for if you wrote something to port B, you could really see it. Um, whereas if you made a char called like I and wrote something to I, it was purely internal. So that's all a marker is. This is a, simply an internal uh, relay. So it's really just a one-bit variable uh, that's very useful for keeping track of like what state we're in. So that's uh, a marker. Uh, we can go ahead and make a quick marker. So let's just go ahead and fire up PicoSoft, uh, get a new circuit open. Uh, so for this one, I've already drug over uh, the, the PLC type, just like what we did last time. And I've got a blank circuit diagram. So the first thing, just to kind of show it to you, is, I mean, a marker, it works just like a queue. Um, if I wanted to, I could go do the simulation of this. Uh, for the first things we're going to do today, let's just make them all normally open momentary, just to keep our life simpler there. And if you wanted to run this thing, you could. Uh, if you hit I1, it turns on the marker. You can display uh, markers instead of the actual outputs. Uh, because the display is about the only place you see the markers, right? Because they're not actually visible externally. They're just variables that you can use to do more stuff. So that's a marker. Let's learn some more stuff. The next thing we wanted to talk about is contactors versus set and reset. Everything we've used so far is a contactor. Uh, they're, they're pretty simple. Just when the rung is high, it's so like this, this rung, it's got power flowing through it, um, then there's a contactor here, it also turns on. There's another thing you can do though. Let's just kind of uh, go back to the circuit diagram. Let's show you some more stuff. Let's change this instead of a contactor. So go ahead and select M1, change it to a set. Uh, and then likewise, you could have a difference. Let's make I2 also control this marker. Uh, and we'll have this one be a reset. So now if we go to the simulation and we run this guy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and display the, the markers down here. So if I hit uh, I1, um, that will make the line that goes to set go high. And the neat things about sets and reset is as soon as I let go, uh, you can see that the marker, it actually stays set, right? Um, and so if I hit I2, as I'm sure you can guess, it resets the marker. So the nice thing about uh, sets and reset is you can just set whether the thing is on or off, um, and then you can remove the stimulus and it'll just stay set. Um, pretty easy concept. Um, and then reset, of course, turns it off. Um, one little note that I'm going to make later in the slides, but I'll just go ahead and make it now, is that you've got to be really careful not to like over constrain something. So here I'm going to have I3 uh, control marker one as well. Uh, this I alluded to last time, and I just can't say it enough. This is a disaster, right? Like, the problem is, is that I've got a set and a reset controlling this guy, but I've also got this contactor, uh, and contactors are very different because they're, like, telling you what to do all the time. So, like, if I hit I1, let's go ahead and display what happens here. Uh, so, go ahead and show my markers. If I hit I1, you can see that this line, it's, like, saying setting it high, um, except for the marker is not actually coming on, and that's because it's being told to be set high on rung one, uh, but then rung three is telling it to go low. Um, 
and you've got two things that are controlling marker one, um, and it's just a disaster. So it's fine to have multiple like sets and resets in the output column, but if you ever have a contactor in here, it sure better be the only thing controlling uh, that that marker or that output, right? All right, so that's a set and a reset. They're handy and easy to use. Let's do an example problem. So the example problem that we want to do is a pretend safety belt system. So our safety belt system has four inputs. So these four inputs, two of them are related to the driver, two are related to the passenger. Um, I1 goes off, this is a pretend system, right? So it fires, and you know, it's momentary. Um, it fires whenever the driver buckles up. Uh, I2 fires. Um, you know, again, a pretend system. It just fires for a little bit. It just says, hey, driver just unbuckled. Um, same with the passenger with I3 and I4. All we want to show is we want to show a cue that lights up uh, that shows when both belts are buckled, right? So you're going to have to, like, keep track of the state somehow for this, the driver and the passenger. Um, and then based on those variables, uh, you're going to have the actual, like, cue that shows a light to the user. Um, so I'd like for you to go ahead and uh, let's do a, a timing chart together, and then we'll have you work it by yourself. So the timing chart, go ahead and take a minute, see if you understand the problem, um, see if you can show when the Q will be high and low. If it helps you, you might try to think of, um, you know, I1 and I2 controlling marker 1, like keep track of that state, and then I3 and I4 controlling marker 2, um, that's how I'm going to implement it. And if it helps you to think about that, then you can use that. But see if you can solve the problem and see if you can complete uh, Q1 when it should be high and low. All right, I'm going to go ahead and solve the problem as well. I am going to think about it in terms of a marker 1 and a marker 2 because I think that that will help me, right? Um, and essentially, anywhere I have an I1, uh, there's going to be a rising edge. And anywhere I have an I2, there's going to be a falling edge. Um, and so you can see that right here, there's a rising edge. Um, and it's going to stay rising to there where it falls. Um, this edge does nothing to it because it's already down, right? Uh, and then there it's going to come up. And then this edge is going to make a fall. So I know that whenever I implement this thing, I'm going to have a marker that kind of keeps track of the driver that's going to be M1. Same game with the passenger. I'm going to have a little marker in here that comes on for the passenger's safe. And so I'm just going to draw him all the way through. Kind of a crazy system, I know. Um, and so there is safe for driver and safe for passenger. And then Q is just the combination of the two. So I just want to look for times where they're both safe. Uh, so it looks like there's a little blip there where they're both I. And then, interestingly enough, there's another blip here. I probably would have missed that. I hadn't been doing this so thoroughly, where they're both high. And then there's another one there. And then that's it. Uh, so those are the times where it's officially safe uh, and the light should be on. You can see that these timing charts, they get surprisingly complex and they make for really good exam problems, right? So practicing with, uh, with timing charts um, and understanding how this thing should work. Uh, it's really important. Take a minute and see if you can go into PicoSoft uh, and see if you can implement uh, and then test this guy. I'll give you a hint. This first two rungs are correct, right? So just kind of uh, keep working from there. All right, so I'm going to do it as well. Uh, so in the same way that I have an I1 and an I2, I'm going to also have an I3 uh, and an I4. And they are going to go to marker two, uh, and it's going to be a set uh, marker two to show that it's safe. And then a reset marker two. You've got to get all your little details right. You got to say the right marker type. And then my output Q1. Oops, I did not get that one set as a reset. And then my output. Uh, this is really the neat part. Markers can be used um, in the input column. So there are three input columns. 
you'll also notice that they show up entirely different, right? So there's one column over here that is special. Uh, it's the output columns. And then there are one, two, three input columns. You notice that the same marker shows up very differently because it's being used in an entirely different way depending on if it's in the output column or if it's one of the input columns. So all I want to do is I want this thing to say um, if marker 1 is high or made and marker 2 is made uh, then light up Q1. So that's the entirety of my circuit. Um, I could go ahead and minimize it just so you can get it all on your screen at the same time. Once you think you've got it it's time to actually run it. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to hit I1, uh, and that'll make marker 1 come on. I'm going to show my markers in the display area here. So if I hit play, <laughs> it'll work better if I hit play. Um, let's go ahead and hit I1. You can see that that turns on marker 1. You can actually see in the diagram that it's actually red through marker 1 right now. If I hit I2, it just turns back off. Uh, if I hit I1, that means the driver's buckled up. If I were to hit I3, that would mean the passenger is buckled up, um, and you can see my Q is now on. If I were to unbuckle the passenger, uh, that would turn it off, rebuckle him, instead unbuckle the driver. Uh, so there we go, I've got a, a buckled passenger, because you can see red all night on marker two, but an unbuckled driver, so the system is off. Um, so you can really see, the reason I chose this example is because I wanted to use something that needed markers, um, and the sets and resets. Um, and it was a really good uh, example that kind of showed those features. Uh, that's almost all there is to know about markers. Uh, let's go back to the circuit diagram. The only additional thing I wanted to show you is you'll notice that there's uh, actually four here. There's contactor, which we know a lot about. It like writes to it all the time, says go high, go high, go high, go high, and then it switches to low and it says go low, go low, go low. Um, set, reset, and then the last one is impulse relay. Let's just do an example of it first, and then we'll go fill out its timing chart. Uh, you can right click, and then I think that there's a way to add a rung there. So add a rung, it's also control I to add a rung. It'll put it above it. And this is gonna mess up my analogy, but it'll be easy for an example. I'm just gonna have I3, sorry, I5, control marker three, and I'm gonna make the type on marker three be an impulse relay. So go ahead and add a marker, make it an impulse relay. Um, so now it's going to control this. And if you wanted, you could actually add it to your uh, to your overall safety system as well. Um, and now I just want to do a simulation of just this guy to show you what an impulse relay is. Uh, if I hit I5, I'm going to show the markers. If I hit I5, um, what it does is it turns on the marker. Um, if I hit I5 again, it turns off the marker. An impulse relay, all it does is it's looking for rising edges. Um, whenever it sees a rising edge, which is why that symbol looks like a rising edge, um, it will toggle uh, the state of the marker. So if I wanted to, I could say I1 is on, I3, and then if I hit um, I5, uh, that turns on that last marker and it turns on the whole system. If I click I5 again, it just toggles it on and off, right? Um, it turns out that there are situations where impulse relays are really handy, and we're going to see one of those in the lab. Uh, so let's finish up just by doing a uh, timing chart. Uh, so I warned you about that simple rule of having multiple outputs earlier. Um, the impulse relay here is I5. See if you can go ahead and finish this timing chart, uh, and then we'll call it a day on markets and outputs. Go right ahead. All right, so I'll do it as well. This one's easy, right? Uh, so it's just um, starts off low, uh, sees it, toggles, sees it, toggles, 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 and then it just stays there. So it's a really simple system. Um, it's just looking for those rising edges, uh, which I have trouble circling here, um, and then whenever it sees them, it toggles. All right, that is all we've got for uh, markers and outputs. Uh, you can go ahead and check yourself off. Uh, that you understand set, reset, contactor, and impulse relay. We'll come back next time to talk about more stuff. See you then.